Look, I'll preface this conversation by saying that uh, I genuinely believe that Andrew Yang is a nice person. He's very personable. I brought him on my program in the 2020 election cycle, and I asked him really challenging questions. And I think that the way he engaged with me uh, was really commendable. He took the tough questions and he tried to answer them to the best of his ability. And he's just overall a really nice guy. He follows me on Twitter, although probably not after this video. But I mean, by now, we've had enough evidence to deduce that Andrew Yang is a fraud. He might be a nice guy, but this whole shtick that he is an outsider, he's anti-establishment, it's all a ruse. And I say that because it's abundantly clear that he is willing to sacrifice his principles the minute it becomes politically expedient. We know during the presidential race, he moved away from Medicare for All, and now he even moved away from his own proposal of universal basic income. Now it's just basic income, it's not universal, it's means tested, and it also is being used as a Trojan horse to gut the social safety net in New York City. But that's not the worst aspect of Andrew Yang. Andrew Yang decided to expose himself by uh, penning an op-ed in support of Israeli apartheid. Now he went on Crystal Kyle and Friends, a podcast where they challenged him, and it was just a phenomenal interview from a journalistic standpoint. And you saw that he was incapable of answering Crystal and Kyle's questions. Take a look. Do you see criticism of Israel as fundamentally anti-Semitic? I do not see criticism of Israel as fundamentally anti-Semitic. Um, I think BDS is a very different thing than criticism of, uh, let's say, the Netanyahu administration uh, or even of uh, some of Israel's policies. Well, it's an attempt to push back on the occupation of the, the occupied territories, that what's seen as an illegal op occupation by international law. It's modeled on the successful movement in South Africa. It's nonviolent. What is it about that movement that you single out to say that is anti-Semitic and equivalent? I mean, you equate it essentially to fascism. BDS specifically, as an organization, as a movement, uh, has refused to disavow extremist elements that have frankly uh, declared uh, that Israel does not even have a right to exist. So that's quite extreme. It, it doesn't make the most sense to take the most extremist elements of of a group and define the whole movement that way. And, you know, we've learned that lesson in the context of other movements and other groups. But would you concede that there's a difference between, say, boycotts, divestment and sanctions of all of Israel versus boycott, divestment and sanctions specifically of the illegally occupied territories? Because, again, as Crystal pointed out, that is the model that effectively worked in apartheid South Africa. No, I'm not sure I, I understand the distinction you're drawing, Kyle, genuinely. Like, I'm just not sure I understand it. Um, right. I can explain it further if you want. It's the areas that it's all it's it's a matter of historical record and fact that are being illegally occupied right now, that the international community all agrees. There's no dispute over it. Some elements of the BDS movement only want to boycott, divest, and sanction from those particular areas. So in other words, the other areas of Israel, they leave alone, but particularly the occupied territories, they say, let's do boycotts, divestment, and sanctions in order to try to bring about Palestinian human rights. Don't you think there's a difference between boycotting in the areas specifically where they're violating international law and boycotting areas where they're not? Uh, I'm on the record as supporting a two-state solution, which I think is a, a fairly... Uh, mainstream perspective. And if I understand your question, uh, Kyle, you know, people who are advocating for a two state solution, uh, I would agree with that sentiment. Yeah, not a good look. Now, by then, you know, if Andrew Yang was actually a good faith actor and he wanted to educate himself about this issue, he would try to learn about the history when it comes to Israel, Palestine. But rather than doing that, he chose to double down. And to me, this is it. This is like where you draw the line and you have to acknowledge Andrew Yang is not the real deal. Because what we're seeing currently in East Jerusalem, in Sheikh Jarrah, Andrew Yang is defending what Israel is doing. Now, for those of you who don't know, there are about eight families in the East Jerusalem territory of Sheikh Jarrah, and Israel is forcing them out of their homes. They're protesting, and as a result... Israel is brutalizing those protesters, firing tear gas and rubber bullets into mosques near the protests. They killed three children. So to defend this, 
is to quite literally defend an ethnic cleansing. But that's what Andrew Yang went out of his way to do on Twitter, showing his true colors, writing, I'm standing with the people of Israel who are coming under bombardment attacks and condemn the Hamas terrorists. The people of NYC will always stand with our brothers and sisters in Israel who face down terrorism and persevere. So effectively, Israel has the right to defend itself and there's no justification for Hamas firing rockets. Okay, does Palestine have a right to defend itself? Do the Palestinian people have the right to exist? Because it's Israel who is trying to expel Palestinians from their homes. And when they protest, Israel brutalizes them. Hamas then responds after being provoked by Israel, and Israel then uses that as justification to kill Palestinians, including three children. Is that really what you want to defend, Andrew? Is that really what you want your legacy to be on the side of apartheid? on a side of a state that's doing ethnic cleansing? Is that really what you want? I mean, imagine having to live with yourself if you supported apartheid in South Africa. Is that really what you want your legacy to be, Andrew Yang? I guess so. Because after his appearance on Crystal Kyle and Friends, he had the opportunity to further inform himself on the situation. But he's doubling down. And uh, to show you who's pleased with Andrew Yang, well, it's actual fascists who love that he is cheering on ethnic cleansing by the apartheid state of Israel. Stephen Miller tweeted out, Andrew Yang is exactly right. Ilhan Omar is outrageously wrong. Ted Cruz tweeted out, Bravo to Yang for opposing the rapidly pro-Hamas and anti-Israel attacks from fellow Democrats Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib. Megan McCain tweets out, Hashtag Yang Gang. And last but not least, Miles Ian Chong says, based. Congratulations, Andrew Yang. Fascists and white supremacists are applauding you for supporting ethnic cleansing. When somebody tells you who they are, I think it is uh, reasonable to believe them. Andrew Yang right now is telling you who he is. He is pro-apartheid and he is defending Israel as they commit war crimes against the Palestinian people. As Israeli forces target the medical people on the ground trying to heal people. That's a war crime. This is indefensible. Andrew Yang is a fraud. And if you live in NYC, he's not the best candidate. Diane Morales is. And she actually supports Palestinian human rights. So if you're offended by what Andrew Yang said here, and anyone who actually cares about human beings should be, then uh, send a message to Andrew Yang. Donate to Diane Morales, because she's the actual progressive in this race, not Andrew Yang, who's a tech bro, who keeps falling on the sword for the establishment, sacrificing his principles whenever it becomes really convenient for him to do so. Shame on Andrew Yang, honestly. Like, this is genuinely fucking disgusting absolutely craven gross behavior shame on you andrew